Batman has seen his fair share of alternates over the years, many of which are incredibly powerful and kick some serious butt. A while back, we took a closer look at some of those alternate reality versions of our beloved Bruce. And now, thanks to popular demand, we are returning to our list of the top 10 strongest alternate versions of Batman with a part 2. Many of these versions are quite nefarious, others use their powers for good. And there are quite a few from a particular Scott Snyder Greg Capullo spearheaded series on this list this time around too. So with that in mind, let's get to it. And at number 10, Owlman. When you think of evil alternates of Batman, typically Owlman is the first one to come to mind. Owlman initially called Earth 3 his home prior to the New 52. He's Batman's equally intelligent counterpart who was a member of the Crime Syndicate of America. Think Justice League, but instead of fighting for justice, they team up to commit crimes. He briefly had the ability to control other people's minds, causing confusion, and later in the post crisis continuity, he had a chemically enhanced super cortex. On this Earth, he's actually Thomas Wayne Jr., the older brother of Bruce who decides he needs to kill his parents and attempts to convince his younger brother to join in on the plan. Bruce can't go through with it, causing Thomas Jr. to murder him too, seeing this as a sign of weakness. He often uses blackmail, threats, and fear tactics in order to get what he wants. Moving on to number 9, Hacker Batman from Batman Digital Justice. Batman Digital Justice was a graphic novel published in 1990 that takes place outside of the main continuity and is set at the end of the 21st century, a world in which technology reigns, and the original Batman has long passed away. Instead, we now follow James Gordon, the grandson of the original Commissioner James Gordon, who ends up taking on the Batman mantle after a sentient computer virus crafted by the Joker long ago ends up taking the city hostage and causing mass chaos. So why is James Gordon on this list? Because knowledge is a different kind of strength, and this Batman is a hacker, making use of something called the Batcom, a computer program developed by the original Batman in order to give his successors the ability to properly fight crime. Knowledge is power, friends. And at number 8, Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker comes from the dark multiverse in the Dark Knight's metal story arc, hailing from Earth-32. This Bruce Wayne was found by a Green Lantern ring shortly after the deaths of his parents, and being emotionally void at the time, he saw the ring as a means of hunting down and killing his parents' murderer. He finds Joe Chill and tries to kill him, but upon doing so, the ring refuses with that being against the mandate of the Green Lantern Corps. In that moment, Bruce charges the ring with the void from his soul, corrupting it with his own willpower, allowing him to kill Joe Chill with it. He then tries to resurrect his parents, but revives them as undead individuals. He would go on to protect Gotham with his ring, executing criminals with no mercy. This caused him to clash with the GCPD, executing them. As you can imagine, the Green Lantern Corps were not cool with that and attempted to subdue Bruce, but their plan failed, with Bruce killing them all and the Guardians of the Universe too. His corrupted ring allows him to create dark constructs, energy constructs, he can negate energy, project it, fly, and also infect others with darkness. And at number 7, Demon Batman. This one comes from Batman and Demon, a tragedy, a 2000 comic book in which Batman becomes bonded to Etrigan, a bat demon in this world, who is an unspeakably evil creature restrained by Bruce Wayne's virtue. When Bruce falls asleep at night, Etrigan comes alive, going on rampages throughout Gotham, but only fulfilling his bloodlust with criminals and those who are guilty. Etrigan looks quite different than he normally does having more bat-like features, but all of the powers of his demon physiology, including electrokinesis, pyrokinesis, immortality, superhuman strength, speed and agility, and of course, a set of incredibly sharp and deadly claws. He's also murdered a lot of people, including Commissioner Gordon and a GCPD squad, which causes Merlin to put him under control and wipes Bruce Wayne's memory for good after the demon kills his fiance. And at number 6, The Devastator. Yet another Dark Knight's Metal inclusion here. To be fair, it is a series that gave us some of the strongest Batman alternates to date and some of the scariest. Anywho, the Devastator comes from Earth-1. He's essentially Batman consumed by the Doomsday Virus. So this is a Bruce Wayne who was always paranoid about Superman, despite being teammates with the Man of Steel. And on this Earth, he was actually right to be worried. Superman would go on a rampage after murdering his wife, and Batman would fight him off with a kryptonite spear. He eventually found himself having to use the Doomsday Virus, a last resort that Bruce infected himself with, which gave him the power to kill Superman along with the sociopathic detachment to really get the job done. He became known as the Devastator after that, with the virus entirely consuming him. The Doomsday Virus gives Bruce some amped up abilities. He can transform into his Doomsday physiology at will, he can regenerate, he can adjust his physiology to maximize its advantage, like generating kryptonite radiation from his breath, he can manipulate his own toxic spores, he can summon spikes from his being or from the ground at will, he can fly, and he has the strength to toss a grown man into the sun. And at number 5, 
with Murder Machine. With a name like Murder Machine, you know this version of Batman ain't screwing around. Murder Machine is yet another contribution from the Dark Knight's Metal event, in which on this alternate Earth, Earth negative 44, we see Bruce Wayne go down a different path in which he takes on attributes from Cyborg. Alfred is brutally murdered in the Batcave by members of Batman's rogues gallery. This drives Batman over the edge, believing Alfred's death was his fault. During the butler's funeral, Batman asks Cyborg to help him create an AI of Alfred, which eventually the two call the Alfred Protocol. But after the Alfred Protocol was activated, it began spreading like a virus, building robotic bodies for itself, and eventually systematically hunted down and executed all of the criminals in Arkham Asylum, and anyone it thought was a threat to Batman. Eventually, the Alfred Protocol took over Batman's mind, taking away Bruce's ability to feel fear and sadness, and replacing his body with a better one. A mechanical one. Bruce went on a mass murder spree, killing everyone that Alfred saw as a threat to him. That's how he got the name Murder Machine. He can do some pretty wild stuff too. His cybernetic enhancements allow for him to interface with computers, using them as extensions of his body. He can split himself into multiple different bodies to achieve virtual omnipresence, and took over all of Detroit by himself while fighting Cyborg in one location and threatening his father in another. He can project energy, resist it, create force fields, has superhuman strength, speed, and durability. He can shapeshift, create interactive holographic images, and is more than just a technopath. He's capable of technomorphing, which allows him to not only manipulate any technology, but to assimilate it into himself, having complete control over it and any kind of machinery that he comes across. In at number 4, The Drowned. Yet another Dark Knight's Metal Edition at this number, coming at you from Earth negative 11. The Drowned is a female version of Bruce, called Bryce Wayne. On this Earth, she is romantically involved with the male counterpart of Selena Kyle, known as Sylvester Kyle, who was killed by rogue metahumans. Carrying a grudge about her lover's death, she goes around punishing metahumans, killing them all off entirely. 18 months after Bryce completed her revenge filled goal, Aquawoman, a female version of Aquaman, emerges from a self imposed exile and wants to establish a peace treaty with Bryce, who essentially rules the surface world at this point. Bryce doesn't trust Aquawoman but feigns a treaty nonetheless, only to be proven right when Atlantis leads an onslaught on the surface world. Bryce defeats them, killing Aquawoman with her own. Trident. But because of this attack, Gotham City was drowned. Bryce sets her sights on Atlantis and performs surgical and genetic procedures on herself in order to augment her body, making her capable of living and fighting underwater, giving her traits similar to what Atlanteans have. She's capable of hydrokinesis, she can summon a dead water army to fight for her, she can infect others to make them a part of that army, she can control and alternate physical forms of those in her army, she has accelerated healing, superhuman strength, speed, stamina, and durability, enhanced senses, and all of the abilities that Batman normally has too, to boot. So, Batman, Aquaman, smushed together, and is a woman. And at number 3, The Merciless. The Merciless was introduced to us during the Dark Knight's Metal event, surprise surprise. Hailing from Earth negative 12, this version of Bruce gained the powers of Ares after he put on the God's Helm. This also gave him an insatiable urge to fight and engage in war. This drive is what led him to join up with the evil demon entity Barbados and his Dark Knights, a group of Batman alternates who aided the demonic entity in its quest to consume the multiverse. Anywho, before he turned evil, this Batman worked with Wonder Woman to try to stop Ares after it was revealed that he had created a helmet that amplified his godly powers a hundredfold. War broke out over it and the two heroes tried to stop him, ripping the helmet off of his head. Diana seemingly died because of it, and Batman, driven by grief, put the helmet on as a means to stop Ares once and for all. He immediately becomes corrupted by the helmet and kills Ares. It's then revealed that Diana was still alive, but now that he was addicted to his newfound power, Bruce ends up killing her, the woman that he loves, rather than risking losing his helmet. He begins a tirade to kill all villains, but eventually ends up killing his fellow heroes as his desire for violence escalated. So what powers does the Merciless have? Well for starters, divine empowerment thanks to Ares. This allows for energy absorption, summoning abilities, weapon conjuration, pathokinesis which allows Bruce to infect others with anger or a desire to fight, mind control, superhuman strength, and of course, invulnerability. Moving on to number 2, Superman Speeding Bullets. While this title of this graphic novel has Superman's name in it, it just as much is a Batman tale as it is the Man of Steel's. The concept behind Speeding Bullets, a 1993 Elseworlds title is what if Kal-El and Bruce Wayne were one and the same. Baby Kal-El crash lands on Earth and is found by Thomas and Martha Wayne. They adopt him and name him Bruce. Flash forward years later and the Waynes are shot down in an alleyway by a mugger. Bruce incinerates the mugger with his heat vision, discovering his powers, and vowing to never use them again, repressing them in shame. He grows up, becomes a recluse, until armed robbers try to break into the Wayne mansion. Bruce stops them, saving Alfred, who then brings him down into the Batcave to show him the ship that he arrived on Earth in. Bruce ends up becoming Batman and eventually comes face to face 
face with a Lex Luthor Joker amalgamation in the process. He has all of the intellect and skills of Bruce Wayne combined with Superman's Kryptonian powers. So, in other words, he is the ultimate OP superhero. But he doesn't manage to top our number one spot, Atman, the Night Judge. This version of Batman is a literal god. In the 2008 Trinity story, we got to see the publisher's main trinity of heroes, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, all become gods after they are transported to a different dimension. It's a whole story that explores how the trinity of characters are essential for keeping the multiverse balanced, and what happens when they cease to exist. In this new pocket dimension, we see that all three of them have become gods. They're worshipped by humans, they're all powerful, omnipotent, and disappointingly enough, we don't actually get to see the full scale of their powers in the comic. It's mainly just them looking down on humanity in the other dimension until they eventually join in the battle back in their main universe, facing off against godlike versions of Morgan Le Fay, Convict, and Enigma, the three responsible for sending them to that pocket dimension to begin with. It's really just gods fighting gods, but still, it's Batman as a god, so. You know, it's kind of super powerful. All right, there we have it, friends. What are your favorite alternate versions of Batman? From our part one and part two list, which Batman do you think is the strongest? Give us a share in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. If you dug this video, you guys know what to do. Spread that love, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more lists just like this one. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.